Picture this. Solid Snake is hired by an unknown entity to extract a VIP. Out of a frozen terraced hideout, nestled between an Eastern European civil war, Snake must evade detection from human enemies, flying drones with thermal optics, and unmanned walker gears that use hybrid optics, both thermal and normal. To survive, Snake will have to find ways to endure the brutal cold, seek out equipment to blend into his environment and trick the many automated sentries, and find weapons that won't freeze up and jam. This is a sort of sequel to my last video, where I talk about how previously mentioned mechanics can be expanded upon, and how new icy gameplay elements could play out in a hypothetical Metal Gear game. The second Snake drops in, the cold will be trying to kill him. An icy silhouette will slowly begin to form on screen. During the first stages, it will just be an annoyance. Then, it will affect your awareness and peripheral visibility. During the final stages, you'll move slow, go blind, and eventually die. Some areas will feature colder temperatures than others, leading to quicker freezing rates. Snake can check area temperatures on an iDroid-like tactical watch that will act out as a live sort of survival viewer. So, very similar to Snake Eater, except I don't want it to pause the actual gameplay. To combat temperatures, Snake can find cold-resistant outfits, find fire sources, or risk slipping into enemy encampments that are nice and heated. Or maybe Snake can try to destroy enemy heaters to force the enemy to vacate the area or resort to primitive fire sources that confuse thermal imaging. The icy waters are nearly instant kill boundaries. Although if Snake were to find a suit capable of keeping himself warm underwater, avoiding aerial drones would become a cakewalk. Till then, mind your step on thin ice, or maybe lure groups of enemies or bipedal weapons onto a perfect setup for a watery grave. Deep snow can be hard to walk on, but maybe you don't have to walk. Skis can be a quick and effective way to navigate the world and engage in guerrilla warfare. Zip past a convoy with a hail of automatic fire and zip away into the mountain before the enemy can reorganize. Use blizzards to evade human eyes, and bury yourself under the snow to hide from thermal enemy UAVs. Track enemy movements, or other assets, by following tracks left in deep snow. Beware that the enemy might be doing this to you as well. In every part of the game, the environment can help or hinder you. Guards can also be directly intertwined with the icy biome. Low-level grunts will lack any thermal optics, have weapons that will jam up due to the ice, and will be more dependent on heating systems that can mysteriously stop working, and supply trucks that can disappear into the cold dark forest without a trace. High-tech Tundra soldiers will have VR-enhanced thermal goggles, guns that can power through the ice, and these soldiers can operate without the amenities and supply networks a normal conscript would need. Aerial drones can't fly in a blizzard, can't see underwater, and maybe certain types of flares and findable jamming equipment could also serve as an effective countermeasure for when the weather isn't in your favor. Bipedal war machines will be right at home in the cold climate, but are at the mercy of their own weight. Thin ice, cliff edges with snow obscuring where a narrow path might end, or some good old-fashioned heat-seeking rockets will do the trick to take care of these guys. This is a Pluskin Boy video, and as such, it wouldn't be complete without some talk about the sandbox. I'm thinking of a level-up system, where we go from tactical to practical. So, let's take the category of assault rifles as an example. Snake and the low-tier grunts will start off with a tactical Mark 18. A 
very high quality AR that you can add whatever optic you want onto, change a whole bunch of muzzle devices, the grips, laser sighting to work with thermals, a whole bunch of things can be done to this rifle. Think about the versatility that you get with MGS-4's M4 rifle. However, this rifle will choke up very badly if exposed to icy conditions long enough. Then you would move on to something like a Springfield M1A. Some customizability will still be here with muzzle devices and optics. However, the gun itself will be prone to certain jams, be a little bit more clunky, have more recoil, but it won't freeze up as much. So it's still a improvement over the AR when it comes to longevity. Then at the top of the hierarchy, you'll have an AK-74. You won't be able to put any optics on this and you won't really be able to customize this, however, it will never jam up under the ice. So you go from that like tactical kind of AR that you can do whatever you want with, to having to compromise with the M1A, to getting to the end where you could literally be sitting under the snow hiding from drones for like days at a time and this rifle will be ready to shoot as soon as you are. So it'll be kind of like a subversion of how these level up systems usually work. Think about Far Cry games, where you start off with that plain AK and you end off with that AR that's highly customized. It's like an inverse subversion of those expectations. And this would apply to all the different other categories. With the pistols, you could start with a really like souped out 2011, having to compromise a little bit more with the older USP until eventually you get to a very plain Smith & Wesson M&P that can't really be customized but will just run when you need it to run. Of course, power weapons will be exempt from all this kind of stuff like C4 for sabotage, stinger missiles for the harder boss fights or unmanned walker gears, and that kind of stuff will exist as more of a single purpose application. Think about Snake Eater's sandbox how the M16 is a better version of your 1911, but the shotgun is the one and only shotgun and nothing acts like that shotgun. So you'll have elements from both here, but primarily for the majority of the weapons, I want to have that sense of progression going from that tactical but unreliable under ice to very just simple, practical, and super reliable under the ice. Now, if you've been watching my videos recently, you'll know that I'm a very big fan of escorts. So this game here would be a big escort mission where the first quarter is you getting used to the survival elements, infiltrating enemy bases, doing some sabotage, doing some stealth, doing some espionage. And then the rest of the game is you doing this, but also having to take care of that VIP that you were sent in to save and get to some sort of extraction point, maybe at the top of a mountain. So you have to work your way down a mountain into the enemy base area, and then figure out a way to make your way back up the mountain. So you're dealing with familiar terrain, uh, just a little bit of a harder version now because you're with someone else that can't do all the things that you can do. The escort will follow the OG RE4 model, where she is glued to Snake's back. When the escort is in this follow state, a heat bonus will occur due to proximity. The escort will always carry supplementary items, rations, flares for dark caves, and gear including different outfits and camo. Snake can command the usage of any of these items for him or her. So for example, if Snake and the escort are reaching an area with water, and the escort has some like wetsuits in her backpack, Snake can say, hey, let's put on our wetsuits, and both characters will change into this and be ready to start swimming. Or if they're both going through a dark cave and Snake can't see very well, the escort will hold up a flare and point it in whatever direction you're looking or aiming. Now the same way Snake can find certain outfits and bonuses in the world, she will also have findable and unlockable outfits. She can also hack drone terminals and enemy comms so you can listen in. And of course, she'll help you mark enemies. As a sign of trust, Snake also shares his signature stealth technique with her. As helpful as she may be, it's hard to sneak around with someone glued to your back. So when enemies need to be cleared, a drone flies overhead, or if you just need to run solo for a bit, Snake can tell the escort to equip the thermal cardboard box, 
where she becomes virtually invisible. So just because you have the escort with you doesn't mean you can't take breaks or get moments of respite when you really just need to get down and gritty with the stealth. But again, the whole idea is that as much of a burden as it might be to protect the escort in this harsh environment, her ability to hack certain areas, to disable drones there, or to give you an insight into the enemy comms, or to hold certain items for you will make her still feel like a useful, valuable member of your little team, which I think is at the heart of what makes a good escort. Little things that they can do to help you along the way to compensate for the burdens that they bring with them. The main goal with all of this is that the involvement of the icy terrain, winds, and waters is something that you play with rather than dealing with. Avoiding the ice should feel akin to dodging a blow in Devil May Cry. Unjamming an iced weapon should feel like a combo string, rather than something that comes before you can get back to shooting. Managing your thermal signature should be as streamlined as looking up to the top right corner and checking your camo index. Instead, maybe we can have a thermal index. Less menus, no crafting. I don't want this to be a survival game. The environment is just deeply embedded and a part of the stealth action. Anyways, here's another video of the hypothetical Metal Gear game. Let me know what you guys think down below. This has been Pliskin, over and out. This is Solid Snake. Hey, subscribe to Pliskin Boy. God damn it. You heard him. <laughs>